Hello everyone, I'm Jordana Van of Raven Light Holistic Healing and welcome to White Butterfly as a Spirit Guide. This past month, I've been asked to contribute to a few articles about animal symbolism for the online magazine Mind Body Green. And since I didn't already have a video about White Butterfly, but I needed to sort out the symbolism for the article, I figured I'd just take the info one step further and turn it into a video. At this time, I also have a detailed video about butterfly in general, which if your white butterfly is a regular experience, you would probably find helpful, and about monarch butterfly. These videos can be easily accessed by visiting the video library on my website, www.ravenlightholistichealing.com. Before we get started, if you enjoy my work and would like to help support me in the creation of this free resource, you can do so by becoming a channel member, which is easy. Just click the Join button next to the Subscribe button. If you can't see the Join button, which will happen if you're using Apple technology to watch YouTube, quick directions for making the Join button visible are located on my website, and the link to the site is at the top of the video description. If you'd like to be a part of my incredible group of supporters but don't want to commit to channel membership, you can click the super thanks button, the little heart with the dollar sign below, to do a one-time donation. And to all of you guys who support my work, you are the freaking best people. Thank you. So, what kind of white butterflies are we talking about here? Any naturally, primarily white butterfly especially the cabbage butterfly, which are often considered to be pests in the garden. Just because it can be a nuisance doesn't mean that it can't also have some really lovely symbolism and messages for us. Before we get into the general symbolism, let's talk for a second about messages involving personal symbols. The general message for even the most common critters may not always apply to you because you already relate to the creature in a way that's unique to you. So the symbol may represent a, a person, a place, a book you read, a song you heard, or any other experience. If you can identify a prior association, it could be something as simple as a reminder to call a friend that you know likes that animal, or it could just be the outer world reflecting your inner world. You may have been thinking quite a lot about a family member who likes a certain animal, and then suddenly there's the butterfly you associate with them. Or you may have been reflecting on a fun experience that you had related to the butterfly, for example, and enjoying reliving those feelings, and then the butterfly shows up. This is a lot like the 1111 phenomenon, you know, where you see it on the microwave and on the clock and everywhere you look. Most of the time, 1111 doesn't actually mean to do anything. It's just the universe's way of letting you know you're on path and, you know, giving you a little thumbs up. On the other hand, if there are a lot of heavy emotions associated with your prior experience with the symbol, then its appearance now is probably the universe telling you that it's time to work on those emotions. For example, if the last time you saw a white butterfly was when the, your relationship with your ex went nuclear and you've never gotten over the experience, this is what you're being guided to face and resolve. Now, if you don't have any prior association with white butterfly at all, before you begin asking yourself about whether or not any of the general interpretations are right for you, ask yourself exactly what thoughts were running through your head or what you were feeling right before it showed up. This is harder than it sounds. A lot of the stuff that runs us has been present within us for so long that it's almost become background noise and it requires some effort to identify. So the message that you're receiving from whatever animal you're seeing will almost always have something to do with what was going on inside of you at the time the creature made an appearance. So figuring out first kind of what was going on with you makes it easier to determine which of the general messages apply to you. So the most common message isn't something that you need to change or do, but it's simply intended to provide comfort. When someone passes away, we often wish for a sign that they're still with us in some way or are watching over us or that they're happy. This is true for departed pets as well as for people. I used to find that this longing was common among my clients no matter the nature of their religious faith. No matter what we believe, seeing a sign after a person or beloved pet's passing provides a sense of relief and completion, a sort of, I made it, I'm okay, and you can stop worrying about me. 
Signs like this are also a wonderful balm to the loneliness we so often feel after losing a loved one. White is correlated with heaven, or however we picture the afterlife, with the infinite and with fresh beginnings, new life after death, and we associate it with angel wings. Lightness, freedom from burdens, these are also associated with the color white. So when someone has gone through a long illness, white can make us feel that the darkness they experienced on account of their suffering has at last been alleviated. So if you combine all these qualities with butterflies, which we view as emblems of lightness and joy, it is as though a now free-flying and joyful soul has come to visit us. Similarly, many of my friends associate white butterflies with angels, and so for them, white butterflies the universe's way of letting them know that their angels are standing by. Now, when we are the ones enduring a protracted illness, a white butterfly can be a message that we need to have faith that relief and release are coming. Not in death, but in finally healing. It's the universe's way of saying, hang in there, it's going to get better. Illness makes us feel like prisoners. I was in chronic pain for almost a decade, so I know. And if you think about the lightness and grace of the white butterfly, it speaks to what we most want for ourselves when we're sick. A return to freedom and lightness of body and spirit. As I said, I went through chronic illness, so I know how this feels, but I also know that you can heal. I did. So white butterfly specific message of healing has to do with really truly delving into the darkness that is weighing you down. Joseph Campbell said the cave you fear to enter holds the treasure that you seek. That cave is all the darkness, all the old and new pain and repressed stuff inside of you, all the anger and fear and self-judgment and shame and sadness and envy all the betrayal, all the loss, and all the limiting beliefs about what's possible for you, but that you don't feel like you have the power to change. And now consider the butterfly, which can't grow its wings and achieve its freedom until it goes through total transformation in its chrysalis. And we really are talking about a total transformation here, guys. That caterpillar liquefies before reforming into a butterfly. So you may be about ready to experience a dramatic transformation for the better, or you've started it. And it may even be a complete metamorphosis of spirit and body and lifestyle. But it's going to require some serious bravery on your part because it's going to be intense. Going into the cave, going deep into all of our darkness, facing it, feeling it, being in it so that it no longer frightens us and holds us back is generally the scariest freaking thing we will ever do. But it's where our treasure lies. It's how we heal. It's how we become the people we're intended to be in this lifetime. It's how we find real joy. Butterflies seem to float on the wind. Similarly, we can float from wonderful thing to wonderful thing in our own lives if we learn how to process the dark and heavy things we experience and move through life in ways that are aligned with our spirits or higher selves or the divine self, whatever you choose to call it. And these things are also symbolized by the color white. So if you're ill, and that includes those heavy mental health issues like depression or anxiety, and I had those too, so hang in there. Think about what was going on in your life before you got sick. What trauma had you experienced or what bitter thoughts were you thinking a thousand times a day every day? Our body takes our prolonged emotional pain and converts it into illness. And so a huge part of healing is going back to those sources of pain and finding ways to let go. Sometimes this can feel exactly like shoveling salt into old wounds or even ripping open an old scar. It hurts a lot. But as we healers say, to heal, you have to feel. And this is where I highly recommend finding a qualified therapist or counselor that you vibe with. Someone who, when you speak, makes you feel heard. Talking honestly about our pain and the 
honest part is the most critical aspect. With an unbiased but responsive third party is the most underused medicine on the planet. Some of my clients would experience dramatic symptom relief at the end of a session just because they had had the experience of unburdening themselves to someone who cared. That was it. The white butterfly can often represent unburdening ourselves so that we can fly again. So think of the old saying, a burden shared is a burden eased. Two, as pollinators, butterflies are linked to creativity. They are vital in the reproductive process of plants. And the energies of reproduction and creativity are both located in the second chakra. We birth creative products using the same energies that are involved in the birth of a child. So this being the case, your form of accessing and processing those painful emotions may involve some form of creative expression. Butterflies are, after their transformation, creatures of air, and so they have a direct tie to those activities that we associate with the element air, which represents communication. So you might communicate your feelings through painting or sculpture or through photography, music, poetry, wood carving, jewelry making, or a million other modalities. Your therapist may be your journal. Mine was. I wrote my way to mental and physical health and got my wings back. It's also important to consider the fact that the butterfly has to come to a complete halt in order to take on its final form. A lot of people used to tell me that they didn't have time to heal through sitting with their pain or seeing a counselor or journaling every day. And while this may appear to be a regrettable but unalterable fact of our busy modern era, when a white butterfly shows up and you've been ill for a long time, you can bet that if you won't make time to slow down, possibly stopping completely, and face what's going on inside of you, the universe will happily arrange things all on its own. And so when we've been refusing to take time we need to heal, and something seemingly bad happens that forces us to stop, this is the universe lovingly pouring you into that chrysalis. So you have no choice but to get up close and personal with your darkness. If you can accept this as the gift that it is, you'll be really glad that it did. Now, while we most frequently associate the color white with innocence, purity, heaven, spiritual living, and all those light and sparkly intangibles, it's important to keep in mind that white is really the absence of color. And so sometimes white butterfly can be telling us that our lives feel colorless and we're just going through the motions. So we may look like we're happy, you know, look at us living the dream, floating along, enjoying all the pretty flowers. Everybody's telling us how beautiful we are. We're being admired. But really, our life really on the inside feels empty and stale. So butterflies feed on nectar, which is sugary. And so sometimes white butterfly tells us that we need to add some real sweetness back into our lives. So what would it take to make us truly happy again? What would it need to feel really alive? You've got to really be honest with yourself here and maybe take some risks. Butterflies taste with their feet and as general spirit guides, they tend to signify that to know whether or not you're going to like something, we have to actually try it first, you know, jump in with both feet as it were. This is so frustrating for people who like to make plans and have a guarantee that whatever they invest their time and money on is going to be the right thing for them. Butterfly tells you that you're going to need to loosen up and just do the thing, even if you don't enjoy it. You still got to learn something and have an experience to add to your store of knowledge. And sometimes those experiences aren't even about doing the thing itself, but a person you may meet or a new direction you take because of it. Also, that relentless malaise, that colorless feeling in our lives can be a direct result of prolonged negative self-talk. Stuff that keeps us down instead of lifts us up on butterfly wings. So learning how to speak nothing but positivity to yourself takes practice. Lots of practice, but it's a game changer. I'm living proof of that. And it starts with identifying how we rain on our personal happy parades again and again and why. 
And again, a good therapist can really be helpful here. They'll help you understand not only where those ideas about yourself came from, and sometimes they don't come from where you thought, but why it's so hard for you to let them go. Similar to the way in which white butterflies can represent that we ourselves are going through the motions, but ultimately not living colorful lives, White butterflies can be a message that someone we have convinced ourselves to trust as a spiritual authority is ultimately a pretender. They're living what looks like a magical, sparkly, liberated life, but it isn't really fulfilling them because it isn't genuine. I tend to refer to most new age pop spirituality as fluff and butterflies because despite its sparkly appeal, it's often lacking in substance, groundedness, and practicality. On the other hand, and this can be a bit confusing, white butterfly can represent that you have connected with someone or something that will really help you on your spiritual journey. So white does symbolize authentic spirituality, not just being tuned in to the divine within and without, but being practiced in honoring its guidance. Plenty of people can tune in, but the wheels often fall off the bus when it comes to applying that information. White also represents having, as we talked about earlier, gone into that cave, faced all the darkness, and let it go. These people have endured a purification process of the highest order, and you'll know them when you encounter them. They feel like light and love and encouragement. They teach you how to trust yourself rather than insisting upon obedience to their directives, and they're humble. This is huge. White butterflies, when compared to their dramatically colored cousins, are humble, downright drab even, and yet we still find them magical. And you can trust yourself in interpreting the meaning of your white butterfly here. The right people and resources for us feel effortlessly and genuinely good for us. It's not desperation that makes us trust them, but a peaceful sort of inner knowing. The wrong ones are those that we have to talk ourselves into trusting, who make us feel badly about ourselves, or who demand that you do things their way and only their way. On a completely different note, if your white butterfly is, in fact, a cabbage butterfly, it can be all the things I just mentioned, but also the bane of your average vegetable gardener's existence. This is because the preferred food of cabbage butterfly caterpillars is, a la the name, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, kale, Brussels sprouts, and any other crops in the mustard family. And so if you're an organic gardener like me, white butterflies may be bringing you a different message entirely from all that I previously mentioned. It's really upsetting to have worked so hard and invested so much money and time in your garden only to watch it be eaten to the stems by the pests. And yet, after those so-called pests have had their fill, they sometimes turn into those beautiful butterflies and moths that we adore. With a little research and creative thinking, it's possible to outsmart some of the pests in ways that wind up being beneficial for everyone and allow us to continue to appreciate the beauty of something that would otherwise be a source of stress. For cabbage butterflies, plant nasturtium in the same bed as your cabbage, kale, etc. Nasturtium produces these beautiful, edible blossoms in a variety of stunning colors, which adds an aesthetic element to your garden, but it also grows really quickly and the cabbage butterfly caterpillars love it. So this means that they will tend to eat the nasturtium and leave your veggies alone. This type of solution is known as companion planting. And so if you're a gardener and keep encountering white butterfly, the universe may be trying to tell you that a seemingly insurmountable problem has an easy and ultimately pleasing solution. The nasturtium is actually my favorite part of the garden. So instead of treating the problem as something that must be attacked and destroyed, how can you add something to the situation that will bring everything into balance? It may also represent compromise with someone that you've previously viewed as attempting to steal from you in some way or otherwise benefit from your hard work. They may not have been attempting to hurt you at all. They just didn't know how to meet their needs. So if you can help provide them with some alternatives, you may both wind up very happy. 
So I hope this has given you guys some insights into your white butterfly experiences. Have a beautiful day, everyone. Cheers.